There's so much to love about Sri Lanka. <laughs> okay. Oh my God, Shabiha, with that introduction, I'm like blushing. Thank you. He's gonna watch this program and be like, "You said you're gonna try. You better try now." <laughs> oh no. I love Kiribat mm-hmm. with Ambulthial and Lunuides. How did she win? <laughs> Who is she? <laughs> is she Sri Lankan? <laughs> if you want to see a true treasure island in every sense of the word, come and visit Sri Lanka. Hello everyone, welcome to this brand new episode of Beautiful Sri Lanka. My name is Shubiha. Actually, what is all about in Beautiful Sri Lanka? Let me explain you a little bit. We will be talking about the exclusiveness of Sri Lanka in terms of culture, in terms of people, dress patterns, and so much more. Not alone, but with an eminent guest speaker. So I have invited today a beautiful lady. Uh, she's a compere, a singer, a super talented dancer, and of course, she holds the prestigious crown of Miss Sri Lanka for Miss Universe 2011. Yeah, you got that right. She's none other than gorgeous looking Stephanie Sirivardhana. Oh my god, Shabiha, with that introduction, I'm like blushing. Thank you. I am so honored to be here with you today. Thank you. So how are you keeping these days? Good, good. Uh, can't complain. We're almost in December. Um, so I'm excited. It's my favorite season. Okay. How has been this year for you? This year has been a year of growth, uh, a year of adventure <laughs> uh, for a lot of different reasons but uh, it's been a good year so far i cannot complain <laughs> yeah. you're such an affectionate communicator what's the secret behind of that oh i love people <laughs> so it's easy that way because i genuinely <laughs> love people because i feel like everybody has a story right mm. and i studied journalism so i love hearing people's stories mm. Um, because you can learn so much from people. people yes, yeah. of course. And, and plus energy and, you know, you just... People are beautiful. <laughs> like beautiful Sri Lanka. <laughs> of course. Yeah. As huge fans of you, uh, we would like to know about uh, the secret or else the story behind being a Sri Lankan Lebanese. Oh. We're so curious to know about that story. Well, um, so my... Dad and mom were both working in Kuwait. Oh, yes. Uh, and so they met there. My mom is Sri Lankan. Uh, sorry, my mom, my dad is Sri Lankan. My mom is Lebanese, Italian, Portuguese. They met, fell in love, had me and my three brothers. And it's been interesting living both here and in Canada because you see the differences between the systems. But yeah, you, you really get to see see both countries in different perspectives depending on where you are staying at the time. It's been, yeah, it's cool. And there are quite a few other uh, Sri Lankan Lebanese mixes as well. Uh, I have met a few. (laughs) So you have studied in Canada? Yes, I did my, I finished my equivalent of my Uh A-levels and my university in Canada, in Montreal. And I did my O-level equivalent in Italy. Oh, uh, and then earlier than that, I was here in Sri Lanka. <laughs> so you have a mix of cultures, a bit of uh, Lebanese culture, a bit of Canadian culture, a little bit of Italian culture, and of course, yeah. Sri Lankan culture too. I was lost for a while. I'd be like, I don't know, where am I? Who am I? Where do I belong? <laughs> that has been uh, so cute to live in, in kind of a way. So being a multicultural influenced person, mm-hmm. um, how that has impacted you to build up your career? Well, I think it has really helped me um, because you see, the culture is a lot more open and a little more expressive uh, in Canada, I Uh think. But now Sri Lanka is becoming that. If Mm. you notice in Sri Lanka, most of the time people are very shy. Yeah, you know me as well. <laughs> I mean, I'm shy too. You know, but the thing is, you learn, you learn to not to be loud, but you learn to express yourself 
and and you also see things in a different light also the education um the way education happens is different because in sri lanka if you notice the teachers always right in mm, sri lanka yes okay. but that and i and i i felt the same because when i was uh, from 4 till about 14 i was in sri lanka studying uh-huh. so the teachers word was god's word <laughs> but that's not the case in canada or in italy over there it's all about you know free will and all uh, not only you're allowed to question mm. you know they encourage you to think outside the box mm. they encourage you to challenge your uh, teacher and be like no i disagree with you you know i don't think that what you said is 100% correct what mm. about this so they really push you to think critically you know and yes. and it's so there you can actually get into a debate you're allowed to yes. so i think that also really impacts your confidence as well because mm. you're you're taught to not always go with the flow you're taught to think about other perspectives and to question yeah that's instead right. of just saying yes i'm okay with everything and you go <laughs> so i think that helped me um and that's something also i i am so happy to see that is happening a lot more now with the new generation mm. um and i think the aragali was a great example of that you uh, know yeah. it it makes me very proud <laughs> to see that you know yeah. so happy <laughs> was so arrogant in that case uh what are your thoughts on that you know see the thing is you are standing up for your rights yeah and at the end of the day um the power is with the people and if you are not being treated the way you expected to be treated mm. then it is civil disobedience yeah they need to stand up you of course you do mm. you know there's a beautiful article by john stuart mill he's a 19th century thinker mm. and he writes a story um i think an essay it was called on liberty i think and he's talking about freedom right mm. they say yes i'm a free person but my freedom ends where your freedom begins uh, right yeah. so if i am affecting you in a negative way my freedom it's not my freedom anymore i am uh, i'm obstructing your freedom mm. and there in that uh, article in that essay i think it's that one mm. or is it on civil disobedience one of the two mm. he talks about how the taxpayers have increased the taxes for a village mm. and the village was like oh no how can we pay this tax and it was a really difficult thing they were suffering so what they decided was all of them you know in solidarity mm-hmm. decided we will not pay the tax so it's called civil disobedience so that means uh-huh. civil because you're not being aggressive you are mm-hmm. not fighting yeah. you're saying respectfully okay. i think this is unfair i'm not going to pay your tax mm-hmm. and it is collective so it's civil collective disobedience mm. because you're not listening to the taxpayer who are the rule makers yeah. so civil disobedience says that you have a right to do that mm. when you feel like it's wrong and that is exactly what the aragale was and i think it was a beautiful global example of how you can stand up for your rights in a very beautiful peaceful way mm. you know in the end it ended up not being so peaceful because of other factors yeah but the idea and the intention behind it was so beautiful we had an entire village mm. like we had you know food kitchens we had libraries we had an entire village come up mm. and that is that has never happened around the world anywhere mm. so i'm sure going forward in political science classes i studied political mm. science as well oh, okay. people will learn about it mm. people will be taught about this beautiful aragale that happened in sri lanka that was mm. so you know powerful mm. children need to get that education more in sri lanka i suppose <laughs> yeah 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 it was it was good <laughs> so stephanie what attracts you more to sri lanka what you find attractive in sri lanka but one to have it. more often uh, visits well it's my home uh now yeah i i get it i get no nothing in life is permanent uh, uh, <laughs> that's true um let's see i i mean i spent now i've now been here for what 12 years 11 years 12 oh. years um and yeah i would consider it home i spend most of the year in sri lanka i do spend a lot of it in canada as well um but i love the people here the people are beautiful um and they're strong 
and they are courageous and the Sri Lankan people are unlike any other people they're so kind caring hospitable hospitable smart you know and and i think also the more you go to the villages or outskirts out of colombo that's where you see true yeah true you know, humans you know if there is if there is a family with just one piece of bread mm-hmm. with all their heart even though that's the only piece of bread they have to eat mm-hmm. they will share it with you and that's the beauty of sri lanka that love it's beautiful and the smiles and of course the food the weather the beach the, there's so much to love about sri lanka <laughs> okay can you name a place in your point of view you find the most interesting place in sri lanka sigiriya sigiriya rock is my favorite oh why what's the specialty because what are the reasons because of the history behind it you see actually i learned something new today so apparently uh Sea Giriya used to be called uh, Shivagiri. Uh, yeah. Shivagiri used to be the name of Sea Giriya, and that means uh, it was Shiva's uh, rock, rock. Shiva's rock, and they believe that that rock fell from the sky, yeah. right? Yeah. So, and in fact, if you look at the history behind Sea Giriya. Mm-hmm. Um, people are not really sure how the engineering of it happened yes because there's such an intricate hydraulic system for the water in the fountains and we're talking about thousands of years ago yeah. to go up 11 feet in the garden and to have the water going up all the way to the rock to the city um where you would have you know pools fountains and fountains and you know there's so much rich knowledge that we've lost somewhere along the line yeah. uh in terms of engineering skills in terms of i mean also the stories behind sigiriya is beautiful like you know they have little um they have little niches in the rock <laughs> yeah. and the the king was so paranoid that his brother would come and attack him yeah. that the security had to go on a rope <laughs> and they would be put in the little hole and they said they have to now watch and stay guard and then they pull out the rope so if you ever fall asleep on the job you die <laughs> so you know there's so many interesting stories plus the stories of all the bees uh, the wasps i believe yeah wasps yeah they say that the wasps are the spirits of the people who uh, who built sigiriya protecting yeah. the rock yeah you know there's such a beautiful story behind it and also the mystery i love the mystery of it um it's considered one of the seventh wonders of the world right. and it's gorgeous so you have to come and see it for yourself uh i think eighth wonder a uh, eighth wonder okay. yes you're right <laughs> sorry you're right <laughs> the eighth wonder of the world do you like the tropical climate in sri lanka i love it i love the sun um, i go swimming uh and i go swimming normally around 1:32 in the afternoon so that way i get a lot of sun um because i feel like the weather here is so nice i mean the humidity is not the best for the hair because <laughs> it becomes like a little you know after, uh, yeah. like so dry so uh, a frizzy yeah. but uh, no i love it and also if you if it's too hot for you you go to the north Uh, you go to uh, Nuoreli, Nuoreli sorry yeah. that area yeah. and you, it's like crisp fresh weather <laughs> here you have nice sunny yeah, if you want to get weather. your body tanned you can go exactly. to jafna <laughs> even here you go to go you go to the beach <laughs> um sri lanka has such a beautiful climate because you know in canada during winter people get so depressed because the sun mm-hmm. gives you dopamine it makes you happy happy right it gives you happy hormones mm-hmm. and when you stay in a place without sun you get depressed and oh, so many right. people commit suicide during winter unfortunately in canada so it's oh, a common right. thing that happens it's very sad and so much so that now they have created light bulbs that emulate the sun oh. so that you can be a little happier So countries like that have those things because they don't have access to the sun, sun. the way we do. Yeah. You know? So we are so blessed in Sri Lanka okay. to have the sun like this all the time. Oh. So you uh, actually you expressed how you think about our culture. Our culture is rich, so rich. Oh my god, it's so rich. Why do you think so? Can you explain a little bit more about that? Yeah, of course. Uh, well, in transparency maybe food or maybe 
Really, there are several aspects to talk about that. Of course, there are so many aspects. I don't think we have enough time <laughs> yeah, to talk about all of them. So first of all, the geography of Sri Lanka. You know, there was a reason why during, uh, back in the day, it used to be the hub. It used to be a trader's hub, yeah. right? During the Silk Road times. Yeah. And that's because it's in a very beautiful geographical location that's very well connected everywhere. And Sri Lanka also happens to be the only island where you can see the biggest land mammal, which is the elephant, elephant. and the uh, biggest sea mammal, which is the uh, oh. sperm whale or the blue whale? One, blue. blue whale. Blue whale, yes. correct. You know, so you have that. And the flora and the fauna of Sri Lanka is beautiful. You know, you go to the parks, there's a reason why Ayurveda and all the herbs and all of these things that they use for medicinal uh, for healing, yeah. like for Ayurveda, yeah, yeah. It's all found here. It's as rich as the Amazon forest, mm. our rainforests, you know, with so many beautiful herbs and plants that you can use for healing. And also the culture here, we have a history of over like 2000 years, mm. you know, whilst Canada, I remember when I was there, mm -hmm. when I was studying, it was only a hundred something years old. I'm not sure, sorry. I look in, you know, I should know the Canadian history a bit better, <laughs> but I know it's not <laughs> it's not more than a, a few hundred years old, maybe hundred and something. I don't know, I'll check that. Okay. I'll have more accurate information, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, Sri Lanka has a history of over 2,000 years. Mm. You know, there's so, there's a, we have a mythology of our own. Mm. You, you talk about Zeus, you talk about Athena, about, you know, uh, Greek mythology, Roman mythology, we have our own mythology as well. Mm. That's what a rich culture we are, mm. you know, and also the arts and crafts. Like I had my sari, my wedding sari, uh, which Michael Vijayasuri made for me, mm. was done with Biralule. Mm. You know, and it's it's a beautiful Sri Lankan, like you see, it's like, you, you know the Biralule yeah, machine, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, It's like, all these little threads with so many knobs and I don't know how you turn all of it and you get this beautiful mm. lace. Yeah. In Italy, you have the Venetian lace, right? Mm. Where you go to, wait, is it Murano or Burano? I think you go to Burano mm. in Venice. Yeah, I think it's Burano. I'm not sure. One of them. I have no idea about that. Okay, so in Venice, yes. there are two little islands called uh, Murano no? and Burano. Oh, okay. And I think Murano does the glass, the blown glass. Uh -huh. So you'll see beautiful Venetian glass with like, they make jewelry out yeah. of it, they make cups and ornaments and it's out of glass. They blow glass in co different, different colors. And in Murano, uh, in Burano, they, it's a beautiful little village as well, but there they do lace. So you have lace umbrellas and they're oh. really expensive because they're all handmade. Yeah. So like that in Sri Lanka, we have oh. Biralu lace. We have batik. Yeah, exactly. So it is such a, um, unfortunately, we have not marketed it well. Mm. And Biralu lace, uh, the making of it, is actually dying right now. Mm. So we need more people to come and continue this rich heritage because it's as expensive, as precious as Venetian uh, lace, you know? Yeah. And the thing is, people of the world still have to see that beauty, beauty of, Sri of Sri Lanka. We haven't marketed it in such a way that people think, oh my God, it's so precious. I need to come and visit. I need to go and buy a Sri Lankan Biralu lace uh, tablecloth oh. or a dress or a we haven't been able to market it correctly yet, yeah. unfortunately. Same thing with our batik, you yeah. know, but we have some amazing designers like Darshi Kirti Sena, you mm. know, uh, Sonali, Sona. who actually do some amazing work with batik. Do you know, I learned to do batik in Italy. Oh, I see. You know, so the thing is, in those countries, they celebrate it. You know, and that's something I think you're wearing. Yeah, batik. Exactly. <laughs> you know, you're wearing... I love Sri Lankan authentic things. <laughs> exactly. You know, I think there's so much to see here, so much to learn, so much, so many beautiful products that we create. You know, um, you know, when you go to Africa. So when I went to Zimbabwe, I bought some pens with like this made out of wood, and it has like. Um, there are five, like the lion, the giraffe, the rhinoceros, oh. all carved. In Sri Lanka, we have the same, you know, yes. it's, our tourism is so rich. Um, so yeah, and also the food. Sri Lankan cuisine is one of the hardest to cook. Oh yes, yes. of course. I only made it for Dushant once on his birthday. Only once? Yes, because I haven't learned it fully yet. There's an <laughs> art to Sri Lankan food. Well, you could try a day. 
it, no, no, I don't have time. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, such a busy person. Yeah. No, no, but uh, I, I will try more. <laughs> He's going to watch this program and be like, you said you're going to try, you better try now. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, yeah, his mom cooks so well. Auntie cooks the best Mwah! Sri Lankan food. What is your most favorite food of Sri Lanka? I love Kiribat mm -hmm. with Ambultial and Lunuides. Wow. I absolutely, and a Badapumalu bath packet with family. <laughs> I love it. Do you know how to cook that, prepare that ingredients or even? Nope. <laughs> I know how to make a chicken curry and a uh, dal curry. Yeah. And it's thanks to Umaria, she taught me. She gave me the recipe because oh. I wanted to surprise Dushan for his birthday. Um, yeah, yeah, but I love the Sri Lankan cuisine and it's so healthy, right? That's why they say you eat like a rainbow. Uh, um, yeah, we yeah do you have your have beetroot varieties. which is purple, yeah. your malum which is green, mm. your potatoes which are yellow. It's such a healthy yeah. diet We have turmeric in that. Exactly. It's, it's full of goodness for your body. You know, it's a very healthy diet. The rice is not healthy, but the rest of it is because rice is full of sugar. Oh. And it makes you so sleepy. After you eat a good rice and curry, you just want to sleep. Sleep. Yeah, yeah I just want to, to sleep. digest. They, they consume oh. so much of energy. <laughs> yeah. There's so much, yeah. you know, there are so many reasons why I think Sri Lanka is so blessed. And I feel like Sri Lanka has not reached its potential yet. Yeah. Nowhere close. It seems like you love everything about Sri Lanka. I do. And, and Sri Lankans are so smart. You look around the world, all the top positions are held by Sri Lankans who have left and you know who have become our yeah, diaspora. They are so intelligent, they are so smart, they have, they have the CEOs and the chairman's jobs and all of that stuff around the world. Why is that? Because we are so intelligent. But unfortunately our country is such that we haven't been able to give enough opportunity for people like that to grow and stay here. So we lose a lot of our brain power abroad and the rest yes. of the countries are benefiting more than us. <laughs> <laughs> so people of Sri Lanka should raise their awareness of uh, nationalism, I think. Yes. What are your thoughts on that? You see... They should value uh, the Sri Lankan nationality, the nationalism. Of they should course. have more patriotism towards the country. Yes, but also you need... The government as a whole needs yeah. to give more opportunity. Mm. Because in the name of patriotism and nationalism, mm -hmm. you cannot sacrifice your quality of life, yes. your, your lifestyle, mm. you know, educating your kids. We have such a great, do you know, the Sri Lankan curriculum, even though I said the critical thinking is not there, that needs to improve. Yeah. But the Sri Lankan educational curriculum is so good. Yeah. Because when I went to Canada, mm -hmm. I mean, I wasn't a very good student. Like, I wasn't the smartest kid, definitely not. Mm -hmm. But when I went abroad, I became the smartest kid because what I learned there was not like you learn the stuff you learn close to your O levels there when you're in junior school here. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So the, there's a lot more knowledge that's yeah. here that you learn here but unfortunately because of the language barrier yeah. and because it's not in English you know you don't have that same it you're not able to communicate that intelligence you know so that's why I, I really believe and one thing I was hoping for with the whole uh, April Aragalea yeah. and all of that was I really hope that the education system changes because yeah. I think now people understood that when the country had all these issues, if you didn't speak English, if you were not able to, if you didn't study in English, you were trapped in Sri Lanka. Yeah. You didn't have the possibility to go to another country, even temporarily, mm. until things got better here. Mm. So it's so important that our government understands this and it's not about our national pride, so we only learn in Singhala mm. and Tamil and no, you, those are important things that you have to learn. Yes. You know, you learn your Singhala, you learn your Tamil. But I personally believe that all the education should be in a language that is now becoming the universal language, which is yes. English. And of course, Mandarin slowly getting there, but English. Then that way you're giving 
you're empowering your people mm -hmm. you know and when you're empowered you'll see more people will stay here. and children have so many sources to refer yeah uh, exactly yeah. and also and also you will have See, when you elevate, everything starts with education. Yeah. When you elevate your people, when you give them more opportunity, when you also give them the freedom to go abroad, then they have the choice to stay. Yeah. Right? Yes. So it's it's a beautiful country. And yes, we have to be nationalistic and patriotic, but we also have to be smart about it. Yeah. So at the very beginning of your career, once you receive this prestigious crown of being a Miss Sri Lanka for Miss Universe 2011, how Sri Lankan people accepted you, celebrated you? Nobody really knew me. So I think the first <laughs> half was everyone was like, who the hell is that girl? How did she win? Who is she? <laughs> is she Sri Lankan? That was the first thing. <laughs> I was like, yes, I'm Sri Lankan. Um, how you entered to this entertainment industry of Sri Lanka? So I actually met Kili, Kili Maharaja Kili. <laughs> and he was such a wonderful man and he's like, what do you like to do? I said, I like to sing and dance and then he goes, I have a singing competition, why don't you host it? Yeah. I was like, I have yeah. only organized conferences like yeah. events yeah. but I have not been the compere yeah. and he's like, don't worry, you learn and then he hired me to uh, host the host Yes Superstar season two, two. and that's how my hosting career oh. started <laughs> thanks to him and then after that, people saw me on TV hosting yeah. and then yeah. I slowly started hosting corporate events oh. and then when I met Dushant I started singing mm. he pushed me to sing because I was a bathroom singer <laughs> um, and I've always been a dancer since the age of 16 but then because of the social work that I do I I didn't dance as much because um, I dance very sensual dancing, just like belly dancing, salsa, yeah. bachata. So I had stopped it, but now I'm slowly dancing as well again. Um, so yeah, that's how it has yeah, gone. <laughs> interesting. How you would invite a person outside Sri Lanka to come and visit Sri Lanka? I would say, if you want to see a true treasure island in every sense of the word, come and visit Sri Lanka because we have the best beaches, we have the most friendliest people, delicious, healthy food. So if you want to just be in wonder and if you want to um, get connected with yourself as well as the, the environment and nature um, and really experience the true beauty that the world has to offer, uh, especially an island, a tropical island, please come to Sri Lanka because it's so rich and there's so much to see, there's so much to experience and your soul um, will feel free and happy and liberated. So please come and visit Sri Lanka. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for accepting my offer uh, to grace this uh, Thank program. Thank you for inviting me. I'm so honored uh, to be on your show. So nice of you. The talk was very informative. No, sorry, I have a tendency to talk too much. So thank you for being patient and listening. No, that was very uh, cool. That was oh, thank awesome. You. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed beautiful Sri Lanka. We'll be right back with another episode. Thank you. Kopi Nati, Benasma, YouTube Experience Ekak Windagana, YFM YouTube Channel Lekka, then subscribe Karana.